In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet, the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart, be acceptable to you, our Lord, our God, our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning again, my brothers and sisters. It is next to the manger I'm sitting and I'm sharing with you. Today, the first Sunday after Christmas, the reading all together reminds us of our God who is the creator of the universe, our creator and our Redeemer. God has such a passion in creation, and after he has created us, he kept that passion in order to redeem us, to liberate us, to save us. He was always, he's always passionate 
about our restoration, our salvation, our redemption, our well-being, our welfare. He wants us to be satisfied. He wants us to be happy and to be safe. And whenever that doesn't happen, he's there. He will not rest. He will not sleep. He will fight for our redemption, for our satisfaction, for our salvation. This is what we saw in the first reading today from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The book of the prophet Isaiah took us exactly from the time when the people of Israel were about to leave the exile, to return, to be restored to the land. And the prophet Isaiah came and said with joy, he said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. With the garment of salvation, he clothed the people of Israel. And he has covered me, Isaiah is speaking, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. So salvation, the robe of righteousness, the garment of salvation, this is what God put on us. Whenever I'm celebrating a baptism or I have a funeral, this passage always comes to my mind. Because when the child, when the family brings the child to the church, in our tradition, we bring the child with a garment, a white garment, that symbolizes this garment that Isaiah is talking about, the garment of salvation. So that means this child is under the garment, under the protection, under salvation of God. The child comes with the garment of salvation. And the child is covered later on with righteousness, the righteousness that is found in Jesus Christ, that is find, found in God. It being righteous because through baptism, the child is being sanctified, is being plunged in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for his salvation, for his righteousness, only he can find in God. And at the funeral, this is the same things we are being reminded. At the door, when the priest goes and welcome the casket, welcome the body. We have a pole that we wrap the casket with. We cover the casket to symbolize, to remind us this person has been clothed all his or her life with the garment of salvation, with the garment of love, and with the robe of righteousness that was given to him or her through 
his or her baptism through Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. So the prophet Isaiah was talking to a particular audience, which is the people of Israel, and to tell them, God has created you, and God wants to redeem you. God is fighting for your salvation, for your redemption. And he continued to say, for Zion's sake, for Zion's welfare, for Zion's well-being, for Zion's salvation, for Zion's restoration, for Zion's freedom, I will not keep silent. God is not going to be silent when it comes to our welfare, when it comes to our well-being, when it comes to our salvation, restoration, and freedom. He's not going to keep silent. He will fight for that. And for Jerusalem's sake, he will not rest until Jerusalem's vindication comes about. Until Jerusalem justification, Jerusalem liberation, Jerusalem's victory, Jerusalem blessings come about and shine out like dawn. In her salvation, until the salvation of Jerusalem burn as a touch. So my brothers and sisters, this is the kind of God we are serving, a God who created us and who would never abandon us, who will fight next to us for our well-being, for our welfare, our restoration, our freedom, our welfare. This is the God we are serving. And then we will burn, that was in the context of the people of Israel, just a people, the people of Israel, just Jerusalem, just Zion. And he said, the nation shall see, Jerusalem, your vindication, your justice, your justification. And all the kings throughout the world will see your glory. And God at that time, the prophet Isaiah at that time was talking to a small group of people and this is what, it was the prefiguration, it was the beginning of God because God was about to extend that salvation, to extend that liberation, to extend that transformation, to extend that restoration to people throughout the world. People of all races, people of all walks of life, he will extend it. And that's why in the case when Jesus, when Jesus was born, as it is said, the nation, it was promised, the nation shall see your vindication. And all nations saw the vindication, saw the sun, the light that was shining. And you remember kings came throughout the world from far away to come to acknowledge the stars. They have seen the glory. They have seen that light from afar and they came and acknowledged. My hope is this, if people came from far away to acknowledge the glory, to acknowledge the restoration, to acknowledge the freedom, to acknowledge the salvation of Israel and to acknowledge our own salvation that Jesus comes to bring to us. What would happen if I myself, if you yourself, we call ourselves Christian, we miss that opportunity to come and adore, to come and welcome that great gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ our savior, the source of our redemption, the source of our salvation, the source of our restoration, the source of our liberation. The true justification 
was not coming just at the time of Israel and just for Israel. The true justification, the true redemption, liberation, victory, sanctification, the true salvation and restoration will come through Jesus. And righteousness are received through faith in Jesus Christ. And those of you who have been reading with me the book, the letter to the Romans, you will remember in the third chapter of that book how it is said, the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ. The salvation, the righteousness, we will receive it through faith in Jesus Christ. So the righteousness, the salvation, the robe of righteousness, the robe of salvation that the prophet Isaiah was talking about, and Paul helped us to understand that robe is fully given to us in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ. And he said, the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, since there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So Paul helped us to understand that salvation, that liberation, that restoration, that righteousness, the robe, that garment, we find it fully in Jesus Christ. We find it fully in this baby laying in the manger. That's where it starts. What was predicted in Isaiah, that the nation shall see your vindication and all the king, your glory, will happen when the kings, the magi, will come and adore, <coughs> will come and testify that they have seen his light and they come to adore him. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, the second reading from the letter to the Galatians will help us even deeper to understand who carries that, this mantle of righteousness for us, who carries this mantle, this garment of salvation for us. It is found in Jesus Christ. As it is said, in the letter to the Galatian today, the second reading, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem. So the mission of this baby lying in this manger is the mission to redeem the world. Not to redeem just Israel, but to redeem the world, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. So when we receive the baby Jesus, when we receive the seed of our salvation, the seed of our righteousness, the garment of salvation, the garment of our righteousness, of our liberation, of our victory, of our restoration, we become, God will give us the spirit of his son because we become adopted children together with Jesus Christ. And we are no longer slaves, but we become all children of God with the same spirit that was, the, that was deposited in the Son, Jesus Christ. We have the same spirit. We no longer slaves. We change the status. So this is part of our liberation. This is part of our salvation to become children of God. We no longer slaves. 
And we should not consider, we should not look at ourselves no matter what we are going through, no matter how low we can be in life, no matter what may happen to us, never ever consider yourself as a slave because you've been restored through, by Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ our Lord, in this baby. And my brothers and sisters, because this is part of the redemption, God who has created us, he keeps saving us, he keeps restoring us, he keeps being with us to save us, to restore us, to be with us, because he doesn't create us to abandon us, but he's there with us in all circumstances. He wants to share in our lives. He wants to share in our joy. He wants to share in our tragedies. He wants to share in whatever we are going through. He wants to be with us. He wants, he doesn't create us and abandon us and doesn't care, but he created us and he wants to be with us so that he continue to save us. He continue to redeem us. This is the kind of God we are serving. In the Gospel of John today, from the beginning, John helped us to understand that this Jesus we see in the manger, he comes to us in the manger, but he doesn't exist today. He did not exist only at Christmas. He did not exist when Mary gave birth to him. He had existed all the time. Listen to what, and this is the mystery we come to contemplate, we come to adore. Oh, come, adore him. Oh, come, contemplate that great mystery of God incarnate. That great mystery of incarnation, because this baby that is born existed according to John, as John helped us to enter into that mystery. He said that Jesus who is born today, he has existed all the time. And listen to what he said. In the beginning was the word. In the word was with God in the beginning, and he was with God, and the word was God. So the word is Jesus Christ, the word of God, and he was in the beginning with God. And John continues to say in the gospel, all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. So therefore, this little baby is not a simple baby. This is a baby that existed. This is truly the mystery of the incarnation. God becomes human. God becomes a baby. God comes and dwells in our midst. And this is the mystery we will never understand. We will never fully penetrate. All that is we need to do is to believe, is to trust in the word of God. All things came into being through him. That means he was there from the beginning of creation. And without him, nothing was created. And today, God continues to create whatever we are doing to create things, to create us, to recreate us, to restore us through him, with him, and by him. You remember from the, from the book, from the first chapter of the book of Genesis, you remember that great litany of then God said. Then God said, and what he said happened. It was just God spoke. 
God did the whole thing with the word. So therefore, the word that is Jesus was already with God in whatever God said when God spoke the word in whatever he said happened. Whatever God said happened through Jesus Christ, through the word that he spoke. And today, nothing has changed. God is continued to do his thing to work with Jesus Christ, his son, through Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, and by Jesus Christ. And that's why later on you will see, during the, at the great doxology, I will say, through him, by him, and with him. Because God is still operating, is still at work in Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, and with Jesus Christ, our Savior. And therefore, if we want, if we need the work of God to happen in our lives, we have that great moral responsibility to come and embrace Jesus we form who is the instrument and the face of God on the earth. And the instrument of God in our lives, the instrument of righteousness, the great instrument of our salvation, the instrument of our restoration. He was in the world, and the world come into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what? was his own. He came to what he has created. He came to those he loved, and they did not accept him. Today, this little baby, Jesus Christ comes into the world, and he came to us, he has created. He came to us that he, God, his father and him created. And unfortunately, he is not received. Unfortunately, he is not accepted. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, this word comes to us today to question ourselves, to challenge ourselves, to ask ourselves questions. Have we received the seed of our salvation? Have we received the seed of our restoration? Have we received the seed that will continue to recreate us, to redeem us, to keep us in existence. Because without him, nothing will be created. Nothing will happen. You might work hard, you might, see, you might do everything, and you will see you are at the same place until you bring Jesus Christ in your life. You might see you, you, you own everything in the world. You own Manhattan. You own so many buildings. And you still a poor person, miserable person, because the one to sustain you, the one who brings you joy, restoration, and salvation, you don't have him. So this is the great wisdom, my brothers and sisters. We need to welcome, we come to welcome today in Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus Christ, God gives us everything. God gives us our, our robe of salvation, our robe of righteousness, our robe of restoration, our robe of peace, our robe of love, our robe of joy, our robe of victory. But to all who receive him, there are some who do not receive him, who do not care. But to those who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave power. Wow. He gave power to become children of God. And when you become children of God, you move from slavery to become true children of God, you have power. And that power that is in you is the power of Jesus Christ himself. And sometimes, so many times, we, through our lives, we are surprised by that power. We are surprised by that power of Christ in our lives. There are things we realize. There are things we went through, and we don't even know how we came out of that. 
And we don't even know how come you can be in the midst of that hurricane of your life. You can smile, you can hope, you can have the peace because you have done the right things. You have accepted Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God into your life to restore you, to bring you peace, to bring you joy, to bring you happiness. No matter what may happen to you, you will stay strong. So if you receive it, you will have that power. You will be powerful. Everybody will be looking, how can he be so powerful? And do not be afraid to say, my power comes from the one who created me. My power comes from the one who come to redeem me, who come to sustain me. My power comes from the one I have received in my life. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. The glory as the Father and the Son and his kingdom in us is full of grace, is full of truth. When Jesus, when we receive Jesus, we will be full of grace. And this is what was said to Mary when the angels came to him, to her. He said, full of grace, full of favor. When we receive the Holy Spirit, when we receive Jesus in your life, you will be full of grace. You will be full full of favor. We will be full of glory. You will be full of joy. So my brothers and sisters, we have all interest in welcoming, in accepting, in bringing into our lives Jesus Christ because as it is said, from his fullness we have received, we have all received grace upon grace. So in Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, and by Jesus Christ, we receive grace upon grace. No one has ever seen God, but Jesus Christ, who is God, who acted, who created us through God, who has been always with his Father, he is the one to show us the face of God. He is the one who has been with his Father, he is able to show us the face of God. If we accept, to, if we make the decision to accept him, to receive him, in him we will see the face of God. And through us, the world will see the face of God because they will see Jesus in you. They will see this baby in you. They will see that salvation in you. They will see you with your in, in your garment of salvation, in your garment of righteousness, in your garment of redemption, in your garment of restoration, in your garment of joy, in your garment of victory. And then you will have something. This will be your testimony to the world. If people cannot see us with Jesus in our lives, if they cannot see the joy that Jesus brings, into your life, there is no Christmas. There is no message of Christmas. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I, I'm inviting you today to make, to do whatever you can to receive that wonderful gift. You may not understand it. You may not discover, be able to discover the mystery line in this manger. But trust God, trust the Bible, trust the word of God in him. You will receive, you have received your salvation. You have received your redemption. You have received grace upon grace. Whatever you are going through, you will have the grace. You will be equipped with your Savior, Jesus Christ, who is in your life, you will be strong. You will be powerful because in him you will receive the power that will help you to stand in the midst of whatever hurricane in your life. You will not be broken. Welcome, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the precious gift, the gift of the gift to his church.
to me, to you, and to the world. Amen.